Hello everyone, uh, this is Colin here. If you're watching this, you're probably a part of the LifeBridge Christian Church uh, music and tech team. And today we're going to be talking about uh, live sound. And the sound that I'm talking about is what is used in our auditorium. And so I'm going to draw a diagram and talk about some of the key components of our system and how it works. Uh, some of it may seem a little confusing at first, but don't let it bog you down. What I would do is sit down uh, with a notepad, take some notes, make, uh, make some questions that you might have to ask, and that way you can bring it uh, to a rehearsal or you can just bring them to me directly and we can talk about them and work about them hands-on. And so what I'm going to start with first is our X32, uh, which is made by Behringer. Uh, this is basically the brain of the operation. This is our soundboard. Sometimes I refer to it as a sound console. Really the same thing. Um, and so there are three different uh, outputs, if you will, or flows um, that come out of this board. And I'm going to talk about them one by one. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is what is called AES-50. So this, um, we'll call it an, you know, a network, if you will. If you will. Um, there are actually two of them on the back of the board. One is A and one is B, and we always use A. Um, so coming out of this is a cable, uh, an Ethernet cable, and it is specifically a Cat5E cable. Um, so this cable uh, goes out the back of the board. It runs through the uh, sound booth, and then it goes all the way to the back wall. And this is not in any sort of specific direction. This is just uh, point to point. And so we have uh, the back wall input. Um, and it is in the back corner where the sound booth used to be. Right now there's like a camera uh, stand kind of blocked off back there. But it runs all the way um, along the wall uh, up under the panel to the back there. And then that runs through the roof. Um, and it runs back down to a wall up by the stage behind the baptism. Um, and it is what we'll call the stage wall input. So out of that input, uh, and this is all uh, Cat5 um, that we're going through, Cat5e, as we go through it. You can actually use Cat5 or Cat6. Um, with Cat5, there may be a little bit of some sound difference. Cat5e is what they recommend, but you can also use Cat6. Um, and it's, but out of this, uh, it goes onto the stage, and it goes to what is called the, uh, and this is also a Behringer product. Um, it's called an S32, and it's called the stage box. And this is what sits beside the drums inside that rack. Um, so, and again, this is Cat5e as well. So once we get to this stage box, you have 32 inputs and 16 outputs. Uh, once we used to begin utilizing these, uh, they're all XLR cable at this point, which is you know like a typical microphone cable. Uh, you just want to make sure it is not DMX cable. That's what we use for our lighting. That is not <laughs> what we want to use. Um, I remember when I was pulling the system apart last year um during our upgrades uh i was realizing there was a lot of dmx cable used for things or a lot of xlr cables used for things that they should not have been used for so anything with audio is xlr anything with uh, lighting is dmx so uh we have 32 inputs and that is where all of our you know our microphones go um, and our instruments and then out of the 16 outputs we also have, uh, this is also where tracks go along with the inputs. Um, and then out of uh, our outputs, we have our mains. And I'll explain that flow in a moment. And then we have in-ear monitors uh, for drums, bass, and guitar. And those are all hardwired in via XLR cables. Um, so um, if we were, I'll draw this. So we have, you know, again, this is not directional, but you know, you'd have your in-ear monitors 
coming out XLR out of the outputs. You'd have, excuse me, um, all of your mics and instruments for your inputs. So you have inputs and then you have outputs. Um, and then also through some outputs <laughs> is you'll have what goes to our mains. And so the way this goes is it goes to the subwoofer on stage um, to the, so if you're facing the stage, it is left. If you're on stage, it's the subwoofer to the right. Um, and then out of that sub, we go up, back up the wall, um, to our mains. And those are the speakers on the ceiling. We have four of them. They're all linked. Um, you know, this is all XLR cable at this point. And then we have four of these. Sorry for my drawing. Then our final main, and again, these are all up top. And then it goes out of this main, the very final main, uh, if you're looking at the stage to the far right, and it goes back down the wall, and it goes to our final subwoofer. So that is essentially the flow of all of the, the audio that is coming through our auditorium. Um, again, you know, we have uh, AS50, and I'm going to explain how to assign channels to that in a little more depth on a totally different video. Um, so don't stress out about that. I'll explain it a whole lot more um, in a separate video. But essentially, you know, we run out this Cat5e cable, we go to that back wall input, then we go to um, another Cat5e cable running through the wall to another stage wall input out of that to the Behringer stage box. And then from there we have you know, our mics and instruments plugged in, our in-ear monitors on stage going out. Then we come this way um, and we come to our subs, then our mains, and then our final sub. Um, and so that is the flow. It's pretty simple. Um, we do have capability to run audio that way out of the, uh, the outputs um, to um, the sound in, the, in the, uh, the lobby, but right now that's not how we run that, so I don't want to confuse you. Um, so, yeah, so just, uh, again, you know, take some notes on this um, if you need to rewind it, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase all this real quick so that I can explain the next thing. And this one's very simple as well. Um, and it also involves XLR cables. Um, and essentially, uh, the same way that the stage box has um, inputs and outputs, the X32 itself has XLR inputs and outputs. It only has 16 inputs on the actual soundboard and it has eight outputs on the soundboard. So I'm gonna explain how we utilize those uh, once I get all this erased. And again, there's a way to assign these things in a certain way. I'll explain that more uh, in another video because it is a little more in depth and can get a little more confusing. So uh, we have our eight outputs. I'll just utilize it this way. And then we have 16 inputs. And so our, our eight outputs here are used for uh, one through five wireless in-ear monitors. That's essentially all the outputs there are used for. And then our inputs here are used, um, we have media that's plugged in from the computer. Then we have two wireless microphones. Um, and that's essentially it for that. But that is just, you know, what you would call analog outputs and inputs, just like it is on the S32 that you have all these XLR cables. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. It's, it's pretty simple there. Um, but that's all we use that for, but we do, and we do, 
if you want to call it intertwining or intermingle those things so we use the inputs and outputs on the stage box and on the actual soundboard itself again i'm going to explain that in a totally different video and it should make more sense so the final thing whoops the final thing uh that we're going to talk about and this one really doesn't well it doesn't affect you at all in the sound of the auditorium but it's important to know is our dante sound card so we have uh, dante is the network uh, this is also again a network it's separate than the AES, aes 50 um, but dante is the network that we use to get audio to our live stream so essentially out of um, the board is a dante sound court sound card and then you have cat 6 cable and that cat 6 cable runs um, to a network switch that is sitting in the sound booth and you'll see that sound booth sitting in the middle rack and then out of that uh, network switch actually one way runs to the sling studio um, hub that white thing um, that's where the audio goes to uh, again i'm going to explain that in a, in a different video but then uh, it runs also out into our broadcast room and it runs to another network switch Whoop. so then out of that network switch we have um, one running to the computer and this is all cat six at this point Dante is all ran over cat six cable and then we have what's running to our speaker um, controller now again that doesn't um, you know matter to the live uh, to the to the live sound what's going on in the auditorium but it is important for you to know that hey you know there is something actually running out of the board to this other network network switch and then out of that network switch it's running to a whole nother network switch it's just good to kind of know that and kind of understand what's going on uh, again that's going to be explained more in another video um, and one last thing I want to talk about that again I'm not going to talk about in depth but I do just want you to maybe take note of it or put it in the back of your mind to remember is the a on the AES 50 network we have what is called and what we utilize is called point to point um, channel assignment so point to point channel assignment um, and while I'm going to show you exactly how to do that uh, in another video I do want to just kind of try and to take a moment to make it make a little bit of sense so we have the uh, X32 here and then we have the S32 here we have one through 32 channels of input. We have one through 16 channels of output. Then here we have one through 16 channels of input and one through eight channels of output. And so basically what happens is we have um, one through eight, uh, nine through 16 and 17 through 24 and then 24 through uh, 32 on the soundboard faders right these are these are our faders um, and these are our groups so on our soundboard when we're looking at it you actually have 32 channels to mix right those 32 channels are being utilized from the stage snake um, so essentially what happens is is you ha we have channel one um, I'm just gonna actually write the number so we have one two three four uh, five six whoop, six seven eight and this is what it looks like we have a wireless another wireless then we have a p uh, I'm gonna call it the piano mic because that's where the piano player is. Uh, we have left mic, leader mic, then right mic. Um, then we have, we don't utilize this right now, but we have crowd mic, and then room mic. 
And actually earlier, I forgot to mention this, uh, this room mic is also uh, plugged directly into the soundboard. So if you look at this, it may not make sense because you say, okay, you might look and say, hey, there's wireless mics that are actually back in the sound booth, but then everything else is plugged in upstage. So that's where this communication between these two boards, or these two systems happen. So you have uh, these two are plugged into um, the X32. Then you have all of these that are plugged into the S32. And then you have these two that are assigned back to the X32. So essentially what I can do is I can take, um, I can take channel one on this board and I could assign it to channel, you know, five on the S32 if I wanted to. That's not how we do it. We try to do it one for one. Um, so uh, essentially, and again, this is a little confusing. Um, now, so uh, channel three here is channel three here on the X32. Um, it's actually channel one on the S32. And I know that sounds confusing, but um, it's kind of like a switchboard in a way. You know, back in the day when uh, they used switchboards for phones, there was certain ways that would enter mixed channels to connect them together. And so that's kind of what this is doing. Um, and again, I'm going to explain it more in another video. I hope that doesn't confuse you. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek into that. Um, but I'm going to show you a much more in-depth video on how to actually uh, program that that'll help you better but it's just a really cool way to be able to use two you know different you essentially have like two soundboards going on because you can assign so many different channels to each thing um, and they don't have to be near each other it's you know what we used to use uh, back in the day um, would be called a analog snake and that would be you would plug a bunch of cables into a square thing and then there'd be one big long thick cable that would run and at the end of that other cable would be a bunch of XLR little XLR inputs and you would you know you'd plug all that into a soundboard and and all that stuff but now what we do is we actually just run this um, through what is called a digital snake the S32 is like the digital snake so hopefully that helps hopefully that makes a little more sense um, about our live sound in the auditorium. Um, again, there's going to be another video that explains more in depth. Uh, there also will be a manual to have some extra, you know, pictures to show you the way this diagram works and kind of works together. Uh, so just take some notes from this again, get you some questions together. And if you have any questions for me, bring them to me. You don't have to wait till rehearsal. You could email me about them or you know whatever it may be and then we can work on them together so i hope this helps and i look forward to seeing how you all grow as you learn how to use the system more and more and yeah we'll uh, look forward to having the next video out for you